Welcome to the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Gretchen Bender. I'm Gordon Mitchell, and we're here in the Frick Fine Arts Building in the shadow of the Cathedral of Learning, <laughs> the tallest uh, building in the Western academic world. And we're here to invite you to join us on an intellectual journey, an open online course called Art, Communication, and Contact Zones. Now, Gretchen teaches in the Department of History of Art and Architecture, Architecture. Mm -hmm. and I teach in the Department of Communication. So you get a little sense of the first two uh, words in the title of this course, but that third term, contact zones, mm -hmm. is a little bit trickier. Gretchen, can it you tell a us a little trickier. bit about that? I think we can start to begin to understand what we're meaning by the term contact zone if we just simply think about the space that we're actually inhabiting at the moment. Uh, this is a cloister, uh, but yet it was built in 1965. It was commissioned by Helen Clay Frick, who is the daughter of the, noto the, the famous uh, wealthy Pittsburgh industrialist Henry Clay Frick. Uh, she built this building uh, as a gift to the University of Pittsburgh, and it was to house the Fine Arts Department and the Studio Arts Department. As you can see, though, this is not a 1965-looking building. It's a building that very much looks like the Italian Renaissance, and she was inspired by the Florentine uh, Renaissance in particular. A cloister is a space of quiet, introverted uh, re reflection and introspection. Uh, it's, a, it's a place that gets you away from the cares of the world, uh, where you can contemplate things like platonic ideals of beauty, uh, instances of, of humanities connecting to the divine, which you can see here in the pictures of Christian stories uh, in Renaissance scenes. Um, Helen Clay Frick secured these murals from a Russian artist, so now we're throwing in yet another actor, another agent, into this narrative. Uh, the Russian artist is Nicholas Lakoff, and he started working on these murals decades earlier, in the first decade or so of the 20th century, and he was commissioned by the, the Russian state. So they sent him to meticulously copy, to scale, these Italian Renaissance paintings so that they could be exhibited back in Moscow at the museum, and thus the broad Russian public uh, would be able to learn about the values inherent in Renaissance humanism. He began this mural project, though, in the years immediately prior to the Russian Revolution. When the Russian Revolution happened in 1917, Nicholas Lakoff lost his patronage. He lost his commission. And therefore, he, these, these works dispersed. Uh, they, they went to several owners uh, in the 20th century. Uh, Helen Clay Frick sort of used that as an opportunity to secure many of them for this location here. And that's why they're now located here. So I'm getting the picture of the contact zone here mm -hmm. comes from the fact that we have this Russian artist commissioned by the, his government mm -hmm. to try to connect uh, the Florentine Renaissance, a uh, long time ago, completely different culture, mm -hmm. to the contemporary Russian public at that time. Exactly. And then another layer that goes on top of it is the fact that they end up here. Exactly. In the state of Pennsylvania, uh, Western contemporary society. So yeah. the contact being uh, the sort of intermixing of the different cultures and people through time and space. Is exactly. Right? Both historical and geographic uh, and the way in which these different communities are intersecting with each other in really rich ways. I wonder, can we show them one more sure. example, do you think, that might illustrate this contact yeah, zone there's concept? there's a really exciting one right around the corner. Let's go check it out. Okay. <laughs> So we're now in the lobby of the Frick Fine Arts Building. The cloister is just off to my left, but the work of art I want to draw your attention to uh, is right above my head. Uh, this is an actual remarkable addition to the building. It was put here only very recently, uh, in the last decade. Uh, it was commissioned by the uh, University of Pittsburgh. The artist is Gu Wen Da. It's neon. It is a giant neon sign. Uh, it, it embraces uh, the contemporaneity. It embraces the, the bright, jarring confusion, the clatter, uh, the, the cacophony of big urban life at the end of the 20th century when the work was completed. Uh, neon is an artistic media uh, that's only very recent, right? So we've, we've just looked at frescoes that were done 
um, in very traditional ways. So it's a little bit scandalous, isn't it, to put a, a work in neon in this Italian Renaissance era building. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in some respects, that was the point uh, because the faculty had become more diverse. That the student population at the University of Pittsburgh, of course, is, has global reach at this point in time. Uh, so it's important to include uh, the art, artistic vision of other cultures in this space and in this building. Uh, other points of contact, though, are inherent to the work of art itself. Uh, it, is ne it is part of a larger series that Gu Wenda did uh, that was called the Neon Calligraphy Series. So automatically that term, right, Neon Calligraphy, implies a point of contact between the very new and the traditional means of, of graphic communication. We hope your quick virtual tour through the Frick Fine Arts Building has begun to whet your appetite for the more substantial case studies of artifacts that will be featured in this course. After an introductory lesson on January 23rd, our students here at Pitt will join you in moving through five thematic modules, each focusing on one or two artworks that call into being contact zones. These are zones where people occupying different worlds intermix, stirring up subtle presumptions and firing imaginations in the process. So come and explore how humans negotiate community boundaries through artistic expression. See how people traditionally perceived to reside at the periphery create spaces and fashion material objects to subvert existing power structures and formulate identity. Share reflections on how similar things might be going on in your own world. Instead of a MOOC, think of this as a HOOC, a hybrid open online course. You'll get a chance to interact directly with us and the students enrolled in our traditional brick and mortar seminar by the same name that will be running concurrently here at the University of Pittsburgh. The course is free and seats are still open at Blackboard's course sites platform, so we look forward to seeing you online soon.